Greetings friends, Brumbeck here. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video. I've been hired by Dark Side of Gaming to do a written review for Vampire, and so I figure let's do a video review as well. And if you'd like to support Dark Side of Gaming, and me just monetarily slightly, please do visit the written review page by clicking on the Dark Side of Gaming logo on the screen right now, or in the description below there's a link. And I want to keep my video reviews to five minutes or less because I figure we're all busy, so let's just get started and get you what you need to know about Vampire. Fresh blood. The smell is so strong. The first thing about Vampire is it's very unique because there's only a handful of quality vampire video games that even exist, and most of them are action-based. And the only other one I can think of that this game obviously takes inspiration from is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, a Half-Life 2 engine game that came out in 2004. It's a cult classic and it's still brilliant today. But this is the first game in 14 years that actually lets you roleplay and be immersed in the vampire life as opposed to just pure action. And they've nailed that tone. They've nailed that immersion for sure. Where has everyone gone? Where's everyone gone? Is there normally a lot of people in the back of a dark alley in the middle of the night? Is there a party somewhere I don't According know about? To the blood patterns, that's where the victim was attacked. Mm -hmm. So that must be the killer's trail. All right, but I really should get back to the review. One of the standouts and what holds this game together, I would argue, is your main character, Dr. Jonathan Reed. He's just so likable. You just play the game, you hear him talk, and man, he is just so charming. I want to listen to him more. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. I'm not familiar with all the staff yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals, most of them. Dr. Swanson. And so it's great because there's tons of dialogue in this game, and he really makes it enjoyable to listen. And it's not just that you're a vampire, it's that you're a good doctor vampire. You're going around talking to people, trying to heal them, trying to get medical information about them. It's really a weird take on vampires at first, but actually it works really well with the sense of trying to cure people of illnesses and blood diseases, and then there you are as a vampire. And the characters in this game are so good. They're, they're so well voice acted. The dialogue is so realistic. It really is what makes this game worth playing, is that it's just so interesting to talk to everyone. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. Okay, great. Half the review done. It sounds like I really love the game, right? Well, I do. I really love the, the game when it's doing what it does best. Characters, story, dialogue, the whole environment, the whole feel of the game, learning about vampires, learning about the culture. That's all awesome. The game is so good on that. But then there's the other aspect of it, you know, where you actually play the video game and the playing of the video game is not nearly as good as the other elements. When you actually have to walk around and explore the world, it's tedious. There's dead ends. There's no mini map. It's hard to find where you're going. There's a lot of backtracking. All the environments tend to look the same. There's only two or three environments in the game. There's sewers, there's the streets, and then there's interiors, and that's pretty much it. And then, sadly, there's the terrible combat. Okay, so let's just get right into it. What makes the combat so bad? Because at first it can look pretty decent, but the thing about it is it's imprecise, the movement's floaty, the hitboxes are bad, the enemy animations are real janky, and yours are too. They'll just shoot across the screen, and it, it won't make sense sometimes why you're being hit. Okay, I'm dodging the force me. And you go into these special moves like this, but it freezes the screen so that the enemies can still hit you while you're frozen. It's just messy. The whole thing is very messy. There's other issues like the game crashing and the game freezing and other things like this. And the keyboard and mouse implementation's got some issues. You can read the full written review to get more details. Despite all the issues, the truth is I do love this game, and I think it's got so much potential. It's too bad that the implementation was not so great. They had a lot of great ideas, but the actual execution, very lacking. The actual playing of this game is not as fun as the concept. But still, since there's really only one other game that gives you vampire choices and consequences back in 2004, this game is very worthy of playing if you're someone that really loves vampires and moral choices and cults and secret societies and all these types of things. It's worth playing, but it's got a lot of problems. And I found myself not wanting to replay and try different choices simply because the game's so tedious. I'd have to go through all that combat, all that backtracking, all over again. But hey, it was a good 20 to 25 hours experience, except for the combat and the bad parts. 
Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. Remember to go to the full written review on Dark Side of Gaming if you want to support that website and support me a little financially. That would be awesome, and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.